everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing the classics book tag. So these are just some questions regarding classics. There's some questions about classic adaptations, just all things to do with classic books pretty much. So I thought this would be a fun tag to do. And I'm just going to start with the first question, which is an overhyped book that you didn't really like. Now I chose a classic that I don't really like, but I don't want to say that it's overhyped. I don't think I have the authority to say if a classic is overhyped just because even if I didn't like a classic that doesn't mean other people don't love it for good reason and it doesn't mean that it doesn't deserve its place in the literary canon so I'm just going to go with one that I personally didn't like one that didn't work for me and that one would be The Catcher in the Rye. I read this as a buddy read with my friend a couple years ago. She ended up loving it and I really didn't like it. And I think that's actually pretty typical for this book. People either love it and it's one of their favorites or they really don't like it and they found it tough to get through. I'm one of the people that found it tough to get through. It definitely wasn't for me. The writing style wasn't really my cup of tea. I found it a little difficult to get through. And because of that, I chose it for this question. But again, I've heard people that love this book. So just because I don't like it, that doesn't mean that you won't like it. And that's actually one of the really great things about books is that two people can read the exact same book like my friend and I and get something completely different. One person can love it and one person maybe could not love it so much. And that's, I think, what makes books so great and such so just an interesting topic of conversation is that everyone has something different to say about them. And you might be wondering, Valerie, if you don't like that book, why are you holding up a copy? I bought the copy to read with my friend. We were shopping at a bookstore together, so we both got the copy. And I haven't unhauled it because I have this fear when it comes to getting rid of classics that I'm going to need it as soon as I get rid of it. I write a lot of papers for school. I'm always digging through my shelves for references. So I have this thought in the back of my mind that as soon as you get rid of that book, you are going to need it for a paper. So it stays on my shelves. Maybe someday I'll get rid of it, but for now I have a physical copy. The next question is favorite time period to read about. Definitely for me, this is the Victorian era. Most of my favorite authors are actually from the Victorian era. I think it's just such an interesting time for literature as a whole and specifically for the novel. I think authors were really pushing what could be done with the novel. I think the way people saw novels was really changing during the Victorian era. And the Victorian era is also the time when some authors began to be like celebrities. So it was a really interesting time. Charles Dickens is just the example that comes to my mind, but I'm sure there are many more. His novels were actually serialized and people would line up to get the next volume of his latest work because they just had to know what happened next. So I just think it was a really interesting time for literature, but it was also just an interesting time in terms of progress. The Victorian era was a period of immense progress in ideas and innovations and technology, and it was really changing the way people saw themselves and saw their place in the world around them. And I think that comes through in a lot of books. For example, North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell is set during the Industrial Revolution. And it really shows that dichotomy between the country and the city and how those two worlds collided during the Industrial Revolution when people would move or when people would interact with one another and just how different those two worlds were. And I'm sure there are so many other examples, but that's just the example that immediately comes to my mind. And the final reason why I love the Victorian era is because one of my interests is actually learning about how science has changed over time, people's relation to science, how scientific ideas have completely uprooted certain aspects of society. And this is so present in the Victorian era. And that is my very long-winded answer on why I love the Victorian era. But there are so many reasons I could probably go on and on. But I will stop here and go to the next question, which is what is your favorite fairy tale? Now this one's hard because I actually haven't read The Brothers Grimm, I haven't read a lot of fairy tales. So I am going to cheat and say Animal Farm, and you are probably wondering to yourself, why is she holding up Animal Farm? That's an allegory, that's not a fairy tale. And you would be correct, but George Orwell did subtitle this a fairy story, 
And this is my shameless excuse to recommend Animal Farm to everyone because it is one of my favorites and I think it's one that everyone should read at least once. It's very short. It's a short but very impactful read. I also just love George Orwell. His books can be frightening but they can also be very eye-opening and I definitely think that this one is worth the read. The next question is which classic are you embarrassed that you haven't read yet? Now this would be Anna Karenina, but it's not so much that I'm embarrassed, it's more so that I'm annoyed. I do have a copy of Anna Karenina in the Pan Macmillan, the blue hardcover editions, and it is currently in storage, and it's been in storage for 18 months, and this is because during the ill-fated spring break of March 2020, when all the colleges around me shut down, I was unable to get back into my dorm and I actually had to have third party movers hired by the school pack it up for me and it's currently in storage too far away from me for me to get it so all of my stuff that was in my dorm is currently in storage which is a little frightening. Hopefully Anna Karenina is safe but as soon as I get reunited with my possessions I will definitely be reading it because it's one that I've heard so many good things about. I'm so excited to read it. I read War and Peace last year and I loved it. So I'm definitely excited to read more Tolstoy. I just refuse to buy another copy because I have a copy and I want to read from that copy because it's the translation that I want to read. It's the mode translation that I would really like to read. So I will be waiting until I get reunited with my stuff to read that one, but I'm excited for it. The next question is the top five classics you would like to read soon. The first one would be Anna Karenina for sure. The second one, would be Giovanni's Room. I read Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin a couple years ago and since then I've been wanting to read Giovanni's Room and I don't really understand why I haven't yet. I think it's just one that has kept getting pushed back which is unfortunate because I love Go Tell It on the Mountain so much that I need to pick up Giovanni's Room. Hopefully I will do that soon. The next one is A Passage to India. I talked about this a little in my book haul but now that I've actually finished A Room with a View, I really fell in love with E.M. Forrester's writing style and I would like to read more by him and the next one that I would like to read is A Passage to India. And then I have two Dickens novels, so I would like to read Oliver Twist just because it's one that I've been wanting to read for a while. I feel as if it gets referenced a lot and I would like to understand the references, so I would like to read that one. And then Bleak House. Bleak House is a long one, but it's one that multiple professors have recommended to me, so I'm really excited to give it a read. The next question is favorite modern book or series based on a classic, and I don't read too many retellings, so this one's a little bit tricky, but I have read one based on Jane Eyre that I really liked, so I thought I would mention that one, Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This is Jane Eyre, but she is a murderess instead of a governess. Well, actually, she is a governess. I just really wanted to say that, but she is a murderess. She murders those who have done her wrong, and then she gets appointed as a governess in this story's version of Thornfield Hall. I'm not sure if they call it Thornfield Hall, but this is just a fun one to read. If you're a fan of Jane Eyre, I think it's fun. I remember really enjoying it. Writing is not too dense, so it was just a light, fun read that I would recommend if any of that sounds interesting to you. The next question is your favorite movie or TV series based on a classic. Hands down, this is the 1983 Jane Eyre for me. I even have the DVD. I love this so much. I recommend it to everyone, even people that have never read Jane Eyre. I'm always just recommending this. I think Timothy Dalton is the perfect Rochester. Zella Clark is an amazing Jane. This is also the most book accurate adaptation that I've seen. They really get some of my favorite details from the book, which I appreciate. And it's just done so, so well. I cannot sing the praises of this enough. I love it and I recommend it to everyone. The next question is worst adaptation. Now this surprisingly is a little bit hard for me. I know some people have really strong feelings about bad adaptations. I don't really. I tend to enjoy cheesy adaptations unless they do some serious wrong. I remember I didn't like the new Rebecca that came out on Netflix. I didn't finish it so I don't feel like I can give a full-fledged opinion but I watched about 20 minutes and I had to turn it off because I really didn't like it. 
So that one, and then I also don't think that Frankenstein has ever been adapted well. If I'm wrong, please let me know. Please recommend a Frankenstein adaptation. I think with Frankenstein, it's just become so absorbed into popular culture that it's no longer what the original text meant it to be. So Frankenstein is the monster with bolts in his head. Victor Frankenstein is either ignored or he's given a different role. I've seen some weird Frankenstein adaptations. If there is a good one, please let me know because I would love to see it. The next question is favorite editions you would like to collect more classics from. For me, it really depends on the author and the book. For example, I collect Dickens novels in the Pan Macmillan editions, so it really depends on the type of book or the author. But one that I am still in the process of collecting is these vintage, I don't know, I think they're just vintage classics. So they have the Bronte editions, they have the Austin editions, the Russian editions. I think they're so pretty and they're also easy to read. They're floppy square paperbacks. These are perfect for me. I love them and I would definitely like to get more at some point. And the last question is an underhyped classic you would recommend to everyone. For me, this is definitely Mansfield Park. This is actually my favorite Austin and I feel that it's the one that gets the least love but I love it. This is definitely a very different novel from Austen's other works, but I really enjoy it. I love Fanny as a character. I know some people don't like her too much. I think she is such a strong character in a different way than Austen's other novels. So she's not headstrong like Lizzie. She's not very outspoken. She's nothing like Emma, but she is quiet and reserved, but she also carries this strength within her and this resolve, and she knows what she wants, and she will not take anything else. She is definitely one of my favorite Austen heroines. I also love the supporting cast in this. I think they're very well fledged out. I love the Crawfords. I think the interactions between Fanny and her family are really interesting to look at. I think there's just so much to love in this book and I wish it received more love on the internet. It usually is people's least favorite Austin, but I really love it. And if you haven't read it, go ahead and give it a read just to see how you like it because I think it's a good one. I definitely think it's underhyped in comparison to Austin's other novels. And those are all the questions. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.